What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back with another Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic I've come up with for the week, and uh, this week is no exception. Uh, thank you to all of you who have joined so far. Uh, I'm guessing that's Great Cutter, uh, Eric Colson, Anton, Bill Shearer, Elijah. Thanks a lot for being here, folks. So uh, let's see. You know, I'm still uh, rocking with the uh, Sway setup. Actually, it's been going really well. The only real problem that I've had so far is like some apps don't really support Wayland perfectly, but um, most of the things I've tried have been have worked fine. Maybe with some tweaks here and there, like maybe an environment variable that I had to set, or you know maybe I had to install an extra package or something to make things work. But uh, overall, I'm pretty pretty happy with uh, with using Sway and Wayland so far. And uh, you know one kind of interesting side effect of that is that the like video playback in mpv is smoother like you know 3d apps seem to be smoother a lot of things seem to be smoother so i i think it's kind of a good idea to try out wayland if you haven't tried it so far that's not what the stream is about but i just want to kind of throw that in there in case you uh, are interested in how things have been going so far but anyway sway has been great and uh, i recommend anyone who's interested in trying out wayland to check out sway Hello to Tathanos and to Jonathan, Daigo, Fikri, Minas Mazar, Emily. Thanks so much for being here. All right. So the first thing I want to mention today is that this weekend is FOSDEM 2023. And that's one of the really big uh, free and open source software conferences that happens here in Europe. They may be the biggest. I'm not sure. There's, I think, FOSDEM and Libre Planet, And maybe there's others. People could probably tell me in the chat. Uh, but FOSDEM is the one that's happening this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, I can't go in person this year because I kind of like submitted my proposal at the last minute and didn't really have time to organize things. So I'm going to be doing a virtual talk called An Introduction to Geeks Home. Uh, you can follow the link that I have here in the show notes whenever I finally get those uploaded uh, to follow that. It's going to be on Sunday. Oops, I should probably put that here. Uh, Sunday, Feb 5th at uh, 8.30 a.m. UTC which is 9.30 a.m. in Brussels time. So um, if you look at the program for the conference, it will say 9.30 a.m., but that's because they are in UTC plus one. So just keep that in mind if you are going to try to catch that live. Uh, but basically, it's a pre-recorded talk that I already did. Um, it's not perfect, <laughs> but whatever. You know, I'm, I'm going to let it be the way it is. I don't want to have to you know, be a perfectionist and overanalyze things. But uh, it's going to play at the time that it's scheduled. And then afterward, there's supposed to be some kind of live Q&A. I think that I recorded my talk too long, so there probably won't be a video component to the live Q&A. But at least there will be like a live chat after. I don't know if anybody's really going to show up to that. So I'll be there. I'm supposed to be there, so I'll be there. But anyway, definitely check out that talk. Um, this is not the last thing I had to say on like introducing Geeks Home. I actually have a more focused video in mind for this channel because I've already introduced Geeks uh, in a variety of videos. So I don't really need to go into like what Geeks is, which I'm sort of doing in this talk that I'm mentioning right now. Uh, so when we do an actual intro video for Geeks Home on this channel, it would be a lot more focused on just like, you know, what you need to know about Geeks Home, how you get started with it, how you can start migrating your configuration over to it if you want to try it. So uh, that will happen some point in the future, near future, hopefully. Got to get back to making videos again, as usual. So uh, definitely check it out if you want to uh, to follow that talk this weekend. There's also lots of other really cool talks um, about Geeks and Guile Scheme and other related cool things in that same track. Uh, if you go to the page for this, this is a, a talk that's in the declarative and minimalistic computing room. So you can kind of check this developer rooms path up here. And if I go to uh, the FOSDEM page you can see a lot of stuff in here a lot of cool talks like this introduction to pre-scheme by andrew watson uh otherwise known as flat watson 
Um, that might be pretty cool. There's also one about, where is it? Uh, Ephraim's talks. It's uh, creating minimal geek system images. That's kind of cool because it might be really useful for um, like Docker containers, etc. There's a lot of cool stuff. I, I, I suggest you go take a look at the list of talks just for this room because it's a lot of really relevant things to people who are interested in geeks. So definitely worth taking a look at. All right. Uh, also, I'll just mention again uh, to join us on the Fediverse. Um, every week, there seems to be something new happening on Twitter that sort of drives people, more people toward Mastodon or the Fediverse. And this week, it's the fact that Twitter is shutting down public API access, which is probably going to stop a lot of people who have like automated posting bots and stuff. So people who want that kind of content or want like, you know, a regular feed of things about a certain topic probably won't be going to Twitter for that anymore because Twitter is basically banning it unless you pay money to have your bot or your API access on Twitter. So anyway, that's sort of beside the point. The point being, if if you want yet another reason to try uh, uh, the Fediverse and Mastodon, definitely check out uh, emacs.ch and fossadon.org. They're two really good instances for people like us. And you can follow me on Fossadon. I'm at David Will on Fossadon. So uh, give that a check. Uh, Moom says, uh, what do you think of Vanilla OS? I've never heard of Vanilla OS. Sounds delicious, though. Uh, lastly, if you want to support the channel, there's one really cool way to do that, which is to buy the book Mastering Emacs by Mickey Peterson. Um, this is a book that goes very far in depth on a lot of topics on Emacs that we haven't really covered yet on this channel. And it's a really great resource if you want to go deeper with your knowledge about Emacs. Uh, the other nice thing about it is that uh, it gets updated for free every time a new Emacs, major Emacs release comes out. And Emacs 29 is right around the corner. So if you buy a copy of Mastering Emacs now, it will, you will get the free update for uh, Emacs 29 when that finally comes out. If you use this link here, masteringemacs.org slash r slash systemcrafters, a portion of the proceeds of your, of your purchase will go to support the channel, which would be really cool. And uh, I really appreciate Mickey for setting that up. Uh, also, if you want to look for other ways to support the channel, check out uh, systemcrafters.net slash support the channel. You can get to there, there from the main page of systemcrafters.net. Uh, and I really appreciate all of you who have been supporting the channel so far. You've really made uh, my life easier on that front. All right, so today I have a blank slide because I didn't get a chance to write out anything for this. But what we're going to be doing is checking out the Nixt browser. If you haven't heard of Nixt, and I know I'm in Firefox right now, but we'll switch to Nixt in a minute. Uh, Nixt is an interesting browser because, uh, first of all, it's written in common Lisp, which means that it has similar hackable capabilities as you would find in a program like Emacs or StumpWM or any other sort of Lisp-based uh, configured program. So, oh, great, we have uh, another uh, Twitch spammer, great. Anyway, uh, the other interesting thing is that Nix is very heavily inspired by Emacs. So if you're used to sort of the Emacs environment where you have buffers and you have, you know, very highly configurable key bindings and all these modes and things that you can set up in your configuration, Nix shares a lot of similarities with that model. In fact, it's, you know, directly, directly inspired by it. So it's basically, you can consider it like the Emacs version of a web browser. And what, what I want to do today is uh, give this another try because I've personally tried it a few times and had varying levels of success with it. But I figured now's a good chance because I need an Emacs-like environment for my browser because I'm used to being in EXWM um, and having access to my uh, cute browser tabs all as individual buffers because each cute browser tab was its own window. So in EXWM, that would make each one of those a buffer. So it makes it really easy to search between all of my open tabs and manage things that way. Uh, so now that I switched over to Sway, I don't really have that capability anymore because Emacs is not the thing that's driving the use of my environment. So I need another way to have an Emacs-like setup for my web browsing experience. So I figured Nix is probably the next best thing compared to EXWM. So today we're gonna to give it a shot and see how far we can get with learning what the sort of core features are, but also uh, writing a basic configuration to change some of the things about the uh, browser because I already know that there's a couple things I wanna do, but there's plenty of other things I don't know that, that are even possible. So we're just gonna to try to um, uh, experiment and see what we can find looking at the documentation and maybe if anybody in the uh, chat has suggestions, if you've used Nixt uh, for a while, then I'm certainly happy to hear those and try them out. So uh, let me check out the chat. Hello to uh, Mark and Jeff Bowman. 
Jeff, I saw your email. I just haven't gotten a chance to uh, reply to it yet. Uh, hello to Fade, Star7, and Simon. Thanks for being here. Okay, so uh, let me just drop the link here in uh, the show notes. So uh, the cool thing about Nixt is that it actually is set up in Geeks already. So if you have um, GNU Geeks installed, you can actually install it using Geeks' package manager. It's the just package name is just Nixt. Um, and Nixt is sort of responsible for many, many uh, Lisp or common Lisp or SBCL packages being available in uh, in Geeks. So if you're a common Lisp developer and you like using Nixt, or sorry, Geeks, then you can thank Nixt for bringing a whole bunch of uh, SBCL packages over to, uh, to Geeks. Hello to Samuel Jackson. All right. So let's just take a look at the uh, the homepage here. In fact, I can run Nixt. Let's just run Nixt and maybe we can take a look at it inside of Nixt and not inside of Firefox. So uh, first of all, let's just take a look at what we see when we first launch this thing. Um, tells us welcome to Nixt and it gives us some buttons we can click on for certain things to get started. There's a quick configuration thing here. Let's click that in a second. Uh, we can list all the bindings for the current buffer. I'm kind of curious about that. So let me click on that. And it gives me a whole listing. This is reminiscent of some of the, the uh, buffer, the binding listings that you would see in Emacs. In fact, you can see that there are various different maps that have their own key bindings. So very similar to the uh, mode maps that you see in Emacs. Um, let's see. So control O is open file. If I hit control O, it pulls up this little buffer at the bottom, which is pretty similar to the mini buffer in Emacs. So you can already tell that there is some uh, similarity to the UI model of Emacs in Nixt. Um, you can see like it's giving me a file listing so it can actually open a file on my local system. Um, there seems to be like a little echo area down here as well, similarly to, uh, to Emacs and also a uh, mode line as well. So a lot of similar features in the UI. Uh, Jeff says, you probably want control L to open a location. Yeah, I see the C set URL, URL here. Another thing that you might want to notice here is that um, these bindings are bound to names that look very similar to uh, interactive commands that you would see in Emacs. So for instance, there's like a set URL. If I hit control L, that opens up a set URL. I could go to, let's say, systemcrafters.net and uh, it will bring me there. Well, actually, searches for it in DuckDuckGo. Probably I didn't put the uh, protocol on it. But anyway, you can see that I can get to a website. Looks pretty good. Uh, Andrea says, is there an evil mode? We're going to find out. Um, uh, Michael says, are you running a recent Git snapshot? Because there's been many changes since the public beta binaries. I am running version, let's see. Uh, Geek search next. I believe it's 2.2.3. I don't know what the latest is on the public uh, releases, but... Let's see. Oh, 2.2.4. So that's what I'm what I have right now in uh, in Geeks. All right. So let me go back. Now I don't know how to go back. So what if I do control? Well, let's try this. Meta X. Does Meta X work? No. Doesn't do anything. Okay. Control X B. I think Control X B is supposed to work. It's not doing anything. All right. What if I click the name of the buffer? Ah, there we go. Can I, oh, so there's buttons here. Maybe if I click back, it will go back. There we go, okay. No backward history. It doesn't give me the original uh, welcome page that it, uh, it gave me originally. Buffers, there it is, help bindings. So this little wheel appear apparently is a buffer list. Okay, so what else can we see here? Uh, let's see, uh, Jeff says, uh, control B. Uh, so my essence, you probably need to click the little wheel on the YouTube video and set the, uh, the, the bit rate to the right thing because I think it gets messed up somehow. All right. So let's go back to that initial help page because that might help me. Um, so Common settings. We see here, switch between Emacs slash vi, uh, vi slash Kua key binding, set homepage URL and zoom level. Let's click common settings. I actually do want the, the Vim style, key, <coughs> excuse me, key bindings. Uh, so now if I hit, uh, I think O, almost like what Q browser and other Vim style browsing experiences have, or even uh, Shift O, you can uh, easily open up new buffers. So I can open systemcraft.net slash videos. If I hit, uh, I think, 
Shift H, it goes back. There's no backward history on this one. Control, uh, Control B. Come on, come on. Control B. Control B doesn't work now. Uh, is it BB? What would the Vim style? I can see Vine mode is enabling my mode line. Cool. What does this plus sign do? Oh, that's cool. If you click the plus sign here, it gives you a listing of all modes. Ooh, dark mode? Uh, that's for documents. Okay, never mind. Didn't seem to help there, but maybe it helps on that help page. Let's see. If I go dark mode here, does it do anything? No. Okay, whatever. Eben4 says, Vim settings in Nix have always been giving me trouble. Okay. Buffer listing uh, settings. Let's go back here. So default buffer URL. I don't really care about that. Zoom ratio, don't need it at the moment. Uh, disable compositing. We don't really have a problem with that either. Let me see if it created a, a config file for us. I'm just sort of curious to see what it looks like. So .config slash nixt, nixt, there we go. Autoconfig.lisp. So uh, as we can see, we have some common Lisp code yelling at us, uh, but it says define configuration buffer. That's kind of interesting. I'm guessing that means um, we're defining the configuration for individual buffers, and there's configuration for the prompt buffer. Default modes, append. Does this really have to be all upcased? Because that's really gonna drive me nuts. Uh, lower case. How do you do that? Down case, down case. Down case region. Yes. I don't know, no, there you go. I don't know if that's gonna work. It might actually break everything. In fact, let's find out. Uh, make sure I don't kill my sway session at the same time. Okay, let's load up Nyx again. Okay, seems to still be working, so maybe the uh, casing issue is not really a problem. And that looks uh, better to me. So we have our buffer configuration, we have our prompt buffer configuration, and uh, we're setting the default modes for those. I'm guessing this is some kind of macro that uh, has like key value pairs effectively, because there doesn't seem to be any quoting on this, so it must be a macro. So we have the default modes, um, nixed by normal mode, and slot default. I'm guessing that's the default for the default modes slot. Not really a common list guy, so I don't really know for sure, but, oh, CLOS, okay, that makes sense. Uh, Fade says, the common list reader is case normalizing. This upcases anything it reads. That's good, because I would not want to be looking at uh, uppercased Lisp code all day long. All right. So I see that they have, have a uh, tutorial here, if I can get this uh, thing to close, there we go. Uh, list binding, edit user files, okay, manual, change log. Let's go to the tutorial to learn some stuff. So for more details, especially regarding configuration, see the manual, control H R. All right, so there's the manual, that's cool. If I use uh, shift H, there is no applicable method for the generic function. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get back to the previous uh, here we go, to, to the tutorial. Geo says, you should contact with Ambervar for a quick next, inter next introduction and do an interview with him. I actually have talked to Ambervar before about doing an interview, but I never followed up with him, so I'll have to uh, do that at some point. Okay. So, modifier keys legend. Uh, yes, of course we know what all these mean. Maybe I should put it back in Emacs mode just for the sake of uh, this... Uh, this demo, right? If I go back to help, common settings, I switch it back to Emacs bindings, okay. And then uh, control B. Oh, that's bookmarks. I want the buffer list. Okay, control XB does seem to work for buffer list. So we have a buffer list here, that's great. And I wanna go back to the tutorial. I probably need to kill the tutorial and launch it again. Oh, meta X works now, great. Hmm. Um, tutorial, cool. Now we seem to have, all right, so it seems that the tutorial, when you run, launch the tutorial, it updates the key bindings in the tutorial based on which mode you have currently or which Emacs versus Vim style mode. So it's good to know that you will get the right bindings based on what you currently have everything set to. It may even 
show you the bindings that you've set in case you've changed anything. I would guess that's the case. I don't know. Uh, Moom says uh, you can get the Dracula theme for it if that suits you. That might help because this is blinding me right now, to be honest. All right, so Control L is load URL. Control R is uh, reload buffer. That seems to have worked. What are the? Why am I here now? This is the start page. Okay, I want to go back to the tutorial. There we are. Uh, meta L is load URL and new buffer. Control X left and right is switch buffer. Okay. Cool, that seems to work. Hello to Cameron. Uh, control B is backwards history. Uh, control F is forwards history. Okay, fine. I think I must have hit control D for downloads. That's fine. Control X K maybe to kill a buffer. Delete buffer, yeah. Let's get rid of downloads buffer. So already you can see, well, you can't see it because it's not showing up on the screen, but I am using Emacs style key binding. So control X B to switch buffers. Um, control G doesn't seem to work to get rid of those mini buffer prompts. Uh, control X K is also delete buffer, which is nice. Uh, control X, control F, that's open file. All right, so at least it does follow some general Emacs uh, key bindings. Ashra says, what are we crafting today? We are looking at the Nixt browser. Uh, control X, control C is quit like Emacs. Meta G, meta G, follow link in current buffer. Um, let's see what that looks like. Is there a link in here? No, we'll, we'll see in another buffer in a minute. Okay, we'll look at Moe's in a sec. Run a command by name, control space. Okay, that's cool. It's like meta X, but it's just a different binding. Whoops, uh, there we go. Yeah, I would like to have control G bound to quit. That would be nice. Or the kind of quit command that would get you out of the mini buffer at least. All right, so Nix uses the concept of buffers instead of tabs. Unlike tabs, buffers are fully separated, each buffer having its own behavior and settings, like Emacs, so that you can have buffer local settings, which is nice. Um, each buffer has its own list of modes ordered by priority, just like Emacs. Uh, a mode is a, a set of functions, hooks, key bindings, and other facilities that may modify the behavior of a buffer. For example, blocker mode can be used for domain-based ad blocking, while no script mode uh, disables JavaScript, which is kind of nice, because I think what that's implying is for a given buffer, you can detect, probably using a hook, when the URL changes and when it's on a particular domain, you can decide to turn JavaScript off or turn on or off ad blocking. So you have more of a Emacs style level of control over what happens in your browser if it, uh, if it works as well as it implies that it should. Uh, each buffer has separate instance of modes. Did I say that already? Which means that altering the settings of a mode in a buffer does not impact the other buffers. Uh, each mode has an associated mode toggler, just like in Emacs, where you can toggle the mode on and off. Uh, prompt buffer is a menu that will appear when a command requests user input, like the mini buffer. Uh, for example, when invoking the set URL command, you must supply the URL, which comes up as a prompt, obviously. All right. I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you because that would be boring. Some commands support multiple selections. Um, when at least one suggestion is marked, only the marked suggestions are processed upon return. That's probably more advanced situation, so we won't really deal with that right now. The message area, <clears throat> excuse me, represents a space typically at the bottom of a window where Nixt outputs the messages back to you. It's like the echo area of Emacs. To view the history of all messages, invoke the command list messages. Well, let's see, list messages. All right, so we get a nice little buffer here that tells us all of the messages that have been written out uh, here. And I can even clear that if I wanted to. Cool, Control X K, I'll delete that buffer. I guess I can delete that. Hey Gun and Alejandro. All right, uh, status area, which is probably the mode line, is where the information about the state of that buffer is printed, typically at the bottom of a window. It says what the active modes are, the URL, title of the current buffer. Uh, basic controls in a buffer, scrolling up and down, it's like Emacs, control N and P, which I haven't been using, I've just been using my uh, my scroll wheel. Uh, page down is control V, page up is as alt V, apparently. Uh, setting the URL with control L. Uh, control T switches to a new buffer, that's, oh, okay, it's like new tab in any other browser, I guess, or any typical browser. Uh, let's go back to tutorial. 
copy and paste is similar key bindings as in Emacs, uh, meta W for copy, control Y to paste or yank. Uh, control meta L saves the current uh, URL to keyboard. Okay, whatever. Um, oh, password managers, that's kind of cool. Need to look into that at some point. Okay, so link navigation we need to check out in a second. Uh, buffer history, yeah, you can go back and forward, that's fine. Searching, control S, S, okay. Single, that's cool. Kind of like um, iSearch or any of the other searching packages. Russell says, uh, what window manager are you using? I am using Sway on Wayland. Hello to Big Edie, I'm Alvedia. Uh Yeah, I know, work always gets in the way. All right, so bookmarks. Yeah, bookmarks, whatever. But apparently the bookmarks are stored in a Lisp file, which is kind of interesting. Application mode. The command application mode forwards all keys to the renderer. For instance, using the default binding of Nix, the key binding control I executes autofill. Suppose the user is using their email client, which also uses control I. So this is sort of like um, line mode versus care mode for EXWM or even other things things where you have to switch which uh, key binding layer you're using. So you can turn on uh, application mode to make all bindings go straight through to, to the page for certain types of pages, which might be useful for, uh, for certain sites. Command enable mode uh, allows the user to apply multiple modes. What does enable mode do? Let's see. Okay. Enable modes for buffer. Well, you don't, you're not listing the modes. Okay. Oh, it's asking me which buffer I want to enable a mode for, and then it asks me, it shows me the modes. Inactive modes. Interesting, okay. Uh, reduce bandwidth by turning images off, scripts off, and uh, WebGL off of these uh, different modes, no image mode, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a visual mode for uh, selecting text. So let's see. Visual mode. There's no binding for that by default. Oh, interesting. So if I so here's like the link mm, navigation thing, but this is not for links. I wonder if it's going to let me select text. So if I put in IE, which is right here, IE, and press Enter. Oh, okay. I don't know what it just did. That was weird. Okay. Not sure what that did. Toggle the mark. Probably need to use that, right? Uh, select paragraph. 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 I can't speak today. Paragraph. Hey. Interesting. It must not be an interactive command. Oh, you have to be in visual mode? Okay, whatever. Okay. A note for Emacs mode users, unlike in Emacs, in Nix, the command toggle mark is bound to shift space. Is that right? Because I don't see that. It doesn't like it. Um, where was I? Emacs. Emacs users. Emacs. Unlike in Emacs. Okay. If you want the toggle mark with control space, you need to use your own override map. Okay, fine. Jeff says, I never got the password managers to work. It does claim to support GNU Pass and KeyPass, though. Yeah, I would like to use Pass in the browser. That'd be really nice if I could. I use one password right now, and uh, a more free solution would be nice, I think. All right, so watch mode. Oh, reload the current buffer every five minutes. It's got a lot of cool modes in it, which, you know, is nice. It has more of the kind of thing that you would want as a person who's a power user and um, is used to the kind of capabilities you have in Emacs for scripting your experience or, you know, having more advanced behavior, I suppose. There's a preview mode, which refreshes the buffer when the associated local file is changed. So if you're like a, doing some web development and you're trying to look at a HTML file on your local machine, apparently that is uh, possible in, in Nixt. You can uh, have it automatically reload for you when you change the file. No code interface to build automation via common list macros. Well, that's interesting. Edit macro. Uh-huh. Name. Uh, my macro. Add a command. 
Aha. Uh -huh. So here's a problem that I have with Nyx every once in a while. Certain things just don't work. Um, errors pop up in weird places, and I don't know why. I figured that it should be working correctly because this is all set up in Geeks. I'm not using some weird distribution of Nyx. This is something that like is, is built for Geeks, so who knows? Maybe it's just a bug in this particular UI. I've never see, seen this before, so I don't know if it's supposed to work in this version. Process mode, uh, conditional execution of a file directory related actions in a separate thread. What? Just launch a process? I don't see it doing anything. Okay. We have zoom page, autofill, uh, download open file. Okay. Help system. All right. So control HT is the tutorial that we're looking at right now. Control HK does describe key. Control HB is described bindings, which is like Emacs, which is great. Oh, where am I? Here we are. Describe class. That's cool. Control H C. Can you tell me what the classes are? All right. What did I just see there? Password store interface. So it does have a help system similar to Emacs where you can get details on the various parts of the, the code of the program. Like in this case, the password store interface uh, tells you what the other sort of related types are, uh, the slots, which in uh, CLOS language is basically the fields on that class type. Uh, probably the executable path for pass. Uh, the directory where the passwords are. There's a command for listing the passwords. List passwords. Why is it not suggesting it to me? That's interesting. Oh, do I have to actually do password colon? No. What about, okay. Control alt uh, colon is not working for me. Is there like an eval? No. Copy password. Passwords, yeah, there's no list because I don't have a password app set up on this machine. Crash with heavy JS webs, okay. Alejandro says, I guess this makes sense for Emacs users that, that do not use EXWM. Yes, that's right. Since I'm not using EXWM now, I'm considering using Nix just because it will give me a more Emacs-like experience. But uh, for people who are in EXWM, you might want to just use like EXWM plus Qt Browser or VimB or another one of the uh, minimal browsers. Surf, I guess, is one of those. All right, let's get out of this buffer and that buffer. Okay. Describe function, describe command. Similar bindings is what you would see in Emacs. Let's see, control H V, what variables do we have here? There's 668 variables and page down does not seem to let me go between those. Probably there's like an Emacs style binding, what control V? Yeah, control V maybe, the, oh, no, that's something else, it's pasting. Wow, that's interesting. Is there like a theme? No, what about theme here? Theme, darken the page. Oh, that worked, nice, I like that. But there doesn't seem to be a theme com command of any sort unless, oops. Home key doesn't work there. That's great. All right. It's not like a regex. All right. Let's see. Sort table, blocker mode, web mode, base mode for interacting with documents. Okay. <laughs> History tree mode. Didn't do anything. Okay. Anyway. That's the, the basic tutorial. So we learned a couple things, I think. Let's see if I go back to, or actually let's say the manual. I think it's control H R. Let's run dark in here. All right. So is this the same thing we were just looking at? I thought we were looking at the tutorial. Oh, okay. This has more information. That's good. All right. So the key bindings, we don't need to see. We saw this information about the UI, basic controls. Buffer history, bookmarks. All right, here we go. Oh no, not that one, automation. Nix doesn't let me watch YouTube videos. Hmm. I think I haven't had a problem with that. Let's see, control, was it meta L? Okay. Um, I 
Let's get a copyright strike. Just kidding. What's YouTube going to show me on this computer? Because I don't think I'm logged in. Yeah. Oh boy. There, let's just search for uh, system crafters. Let's watch the stream. I think it's gonna work. Oh, we gotta watch ads. Great. I don't think you can hear it anyway. Maybe it's because I'm in the. Uh, I'm glad this is not playing audio back. I, maybe it's because I'm in the. Uh, I'm in Sway. It might be making it easier for it to, to run. I don't know why. Who knows? Anyway. It does work for me, at least, on this machine. Okay. Help system configuration. Okay. Mark says, it would be good to know if Nick supports developer tools and incognito mode. Developer tools. Uh, open inspector. So, control meta C. Uh, seems to work. Uh, this is... So by default, this is using the WebKit GTK uh, browser engine. Uh, I think there's a way to use the uh, Chromium Blink or WebKit or sorry, Web Engine engine. Blink may not be the same thing, but uh, it's not set up by default and it requires maybe building your own build of Nixt. But at least this one does use WebKit GTK, which is not necessarily you have an Adderall shortage. What exactly are you implying, sir? Um, WebKit GTK is not necessarily the best engine. Certain things don't render correctly, in my opinion, but I don't know. It seems to be doing fine enough as it is. And uh, I haven't really used the WebKit GTK inspector very much, but it is... It works. Alejandro says, I'm also using Sway. I'm not exactly sure then why it wouldn't be working unless you're missing... Um, some of the GStreamer plugins. I have some GStreamer plugins which might have codecs that are needed for YouTube. The browser reports itself as Safari. Hmm. Okay, let's get back to this. All right, so Nix is written in Common Lisp, uh, offers a great perk. Everything in the browser can be customized by the user even while it's running. So to get started with Common Lisp, we recommend checking out blah, blah, whatever. Uh, describe class, describe slot. That's fine. So settings created by Nix are stored in this auto config file, but that's not actually the one that you should be editing by hand, apparently. And that's probably why everything is uppercase there, because it's not necessarily meant for you to go edit that file. I think your file that you, sh you should go edit is this init.lisp file in the same folder. So auto config to store settings that you've clicked a button inside of the UI to set. Um, and it should be left alone, apparently. I guess it doesn't matter that much, but maybe the uh, config system can't read it back. I don't know. But at least uh, in the init.list file, that's where we should be storing our own stuff. All right. So example configuration, define configuration for buffer, default modes. We saw this already. Uh, and this makes no script mode the, one of the default modes for a new buffer, it seems. Uh, say, okay, cool. So define configuration is a macro. It can be used to customize the slots of classes like the browser, buffer, windows, etc. Refer to the class and slot documentation for the individual details. Now, class and slot documentation for what? Buffer? Let's see. Describe uh, class. Buffer? Okay. That might actually be it. Excuse me. Search engines. Okay, so it actually gives us some pointers here a little bit about how we might configure some of this. Uh, the search engine list, we might be able to change this so that make instance. Okay, so make instance of a class called search engine. All right, so maybe if we were to do the same thing, describe class search engine, okay. Now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. There seems to be a configure button here as well. But 
I don't see how that makes any sense, unless this is like a, uh, a class level slot. Okay. Shortcut search URL completion function. Hmm. So if I go back, search URL, fallback URL, base URL. So I'm not seeing, oh, is it because of the completion function? <laughs> List of search engine objects. You can invoke them from the prompt buffer by prefixing your query with shortcut. I see. So DDG is a shortcut in this case. And if I were to open up a new buffer, I'm using Alt O and it's not doing anything, which is great. Control, oh, sorry, Alt L, that's it. Okay, DDG, I think it defaults to DuckDuckGo and you have to add extra ones. What if I type in wiki space, uh, Freddie Mercury, should search Wikipedia. All right, that worked. Uh, what is it? Control X left. Okay. So it's printing out the, the default value. You get to see this and you can um, copy and paste this and change it yourself if you want in your, uh, your NIT file. Now this seems to be a, a little bit um, kind of overkill code baked in here. It looks like they're filtering the results. Are they actually searching against Wikipedia and giving you the names of things? Let's try that. Um, if I were to use uh, Alt L again, Wiki, um, GNU Emacs, does it, okay, it gives me actual suggestions apparently. So what if I type in, what's something else? Programming language. All right, so it gives me, it definitely gives me suggestions coming from uh, Wikipedia. That's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. Or at least not in this browser. I haven't tried to use it before like that. <laughs> All right. And where are we again? This is the buffer class. Okay. So let me just uh, run back for a second. So in uh, common Lisp, is it object system? What does is, what is CLS, CLOS stand for? Let's actually use wiki for that, huh? CLOS? No, uh, Alt L, wiki, CLOS. <laughs> common Lisp object system, there you go. Anyway, in common Lisp object system, this is basically an object oriented model for um, for common Lisp, and you have classes which can be defined, you know, like in many other languages that have classes, you could have, you know, parent child hierarchy relationships, etc. But um, a class has something called slots and uh, also methods that are applicable to it. So in this case, when the documentation is telling us about slots, what it means is the fields that you can set on an instance of. Um, the class. So in this case, we see this list of slots here. And for a buffer, you can set, um, well, the ID, which you probably don't want to set, but it's something that's used internally. But the URL, the title of the buffer, um, there's hooks for the buffer. So the, uh, let's see, every mode activation. So when a mode is activated in the buffer, there's a hook that gets called. So you can maybe, you know, do something related to that mode. The search engines list is a slot you can set. So basically what you would do to configure Nix apparently is using this uh, define configuration macro to set the slots on particular types or classes like buffer. And uh, that is how you configure everything. It's a little bit different than um, Emacs list because in Emacs list you have, can I do this real quick? I wanna darken this, it's killing my eyes. In Emacs Lisp, you have just like a global scope full of variables that are relative to whatever packages you have loaded up in, in Emacs at any given moment. In this, uh, the variables are more scoped to particular classes. So you don't have that you know huge global scope of variables. 
but I don't know if it's easy to find things that you need to find for customization, sort of like it is in Emacs. So let's just take a look at Control H V, search engines. So I don't see the the buffer namespace. Switch buffer hook, buffer search. Yeah, so it doesn't show up for described variables. So I wonder like what the difference between variables and uh, slots are in the case of Nixt. There seem to be some global variables for some types of configuration, like, well, there's password interfaces, but that doesn't really count. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff in here. I don't know that users are gonna wanna look at a lot of these. There's web mode, copy after hook, well, that's, that's usable. I'm guessing it's a hook that runs after you copy something, maybe. Moom says uh, RAM usage. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Rockhead. It's telling me he's using 4.8% of my memory, which doesn't tell us a whole lot. I don't know if there's a way in Rockhead to uh, expand on that to give it the actual value. Okay. Now I'm going back and it keeps jumping through other buffers that are unrelated. I don't know why it does that. Smooth scrolling, hmm. Let's try to set that actually. So, let me go into Emacs. Oh, interesting. So it didn't recognize the existing configuration. Let's get rid of that. Maybe it doesn't like it. I'm gonna go into init.lisp, paste this in. Uh, we'll go and down case all this again. And then, uh, what is it, buffer? It was buffer, right? Buffer uh, smooth scrolling. I'm guessing that's gonna be T or nil for the Boolean in there. So, I'll also put on key cast tab bar mode. There we go. All right, so for buffer, I wanna run uh, smooth scrolling. T. I guess this will work. I don't really know if it's going to work, but is there a way to reload uh, configuration? Load init file. There we go. So it probably doesn't work until I reload the buffer. Reload buffers. Reload the current buffer. Control R. Ah. Control H R. Go back to the manual. All right. I'm not seeing smooth scrolling here yet. Atomically, uh, Fade says maybe set up a slink slime server in the Nix process so you can change this stuff automatically or atomically. Yes, I want to do that. I'll get to that maybe a little bit later. So let's uh, kill that buffer. Kill that buffer. Kill that buffer. Kill that buffer. Let's kill a bunch of these buffers. Don't kill the buffer list. Okay, so Control H R. Ah, smooth scrolling. Okay, so it did, it did actually work. That's nice. And then darken mode. So it is possible to get uh, smooth scrolling working then, which is good. Oh, right here, actually, inside the manual, Alejandro. It says, troubleshooting, playing videos. Nix delegates video support to third-party plugins. When using the web G GTK backends, which is the default, Gstreamer and its plugins are leveraged, so basically you might need to install all of these plugins so that um, YouTube can play videos correctly. And uh, if you're on other systems like Debian-based or Fedora-based systems, uh, you might need some extra packages, but I think these all do work in Geeks. They have those names, so that should be enough. Oh, and you may also have to do this last step of clearing the GStreamer cache. I've never had to do that before, but I think it's usually because I have all these plugins installed by default in my Geek setup. So I install Nixt after those usually. Also, this appears to have something to do with website crashes. If some websites systematically crash, try to install all the required GStreamer plugins as mentioned. Okay. Hmm. If you're experiencing problems with blank web views on some sites, you can try to disable compositing. All right. Interesting. 
So let's go back to configuration. All right. So we did see that this uh, file actually does work to find configuration for the buffer type, and then we set smooth scrolling to true. So this configuration macro does actually seem to work as it's supposed to for setting values. And uh, as we saw before, we used uh, control H, uh, well, hold on. Describe class, control H capital C, and then type in buffer. Let's darken that. I could probably set up darken to happen by default, but I don't really want to do that unless, well, I wonder if I can do that for like help buffers. Control H R. Okay. Uh, control H T. That's also a help buffer. Well, let's try that out. I have to kill the buffer twice before it goes away. That's interesting. All right. So help. Hello. Help. Uh, hook. Where am I? Is this the, okay, it's the buffer help. Get the Dracula theme. Well, I'll have to look it up, but I need to find something else first. Uh, enable mode hook. So hook run on every mode activation after the mode specific hook. Well, there's probably a help, help mode hook, help after hook. Okay, so does the manual tell me? How to deal with hooks hook hooks. There we are. Hooks provide a powerful mechanism to tweak the behavior of various events that occur in the context of windows buffers modes, etc. A hook holds a list of handlers. Okay, so let's see. Define configuration web buffer request resource hook does is there like a help buffer also? Um, control H capital C help buffer. No. Okay. I think web buffer derives from buffer. So we can just set it for buffer, I guess. Hmm. Does this tell me what modes are currently on? Okay. If they're marked, that means they're on. And base mode seems to be marked. Emacs mode, help mode. Okay. So help mode is on. So there should be a hook. Actually, let's see. Uh, if I were to go describe mode. No. How about describe command? Help mode. There we go. So that's just a source, I guess. Next slash help mode. So if I look at um, next slash help mode, okay, help mode after hook. I should be able to do something with that, I think. All right. Is that what I found already? Help after hook? Huh. All right. Let's just give a look back at the manual. Hooks add hook. Can I do this without? Okay, so global hooks such as after init hook, window or buffer related hooks, modes enable and disable hooks. Do you can you show me a, an example of a mode hook? This is kind of an interesting example though, because what they're doing is setting up a hook for web buffers. There's a hook called request resource hook. And if you add a function for that, make handler resource, I don't know exactly what that means, but um, I think you can modify the URL. In this case, it's catching anything for reddit.com. And it is setting the host of the URL to old.reddit.com and logging a line to the um, the message window, I guess. Alejandro says that it worked. Cool, that's great. I think that, uh, he's referring to uh, setting up the right uh, GStreamer plugins to watch YouTube videos. All right, so 
it returns a URL. They're using that in set F to set the URL on request data. I'm guessing that's the slot setter maybe. And then returning request data. So we're just you know manipulating the URL effectively. Okay. But I still don't know. How about if I use describe function and look at uh, hooks colon add hook? No. How about add hook, huh? No. Um, what is hooks then? Is hooks a type? Describe class hooks. Where is it? Uh, wait. Describe command. Is it control? Control H C. Uh, add hook. Nope. Jeff says another problem I'm getting is that certificate exceptions cause a browser to freeze. That's not fun. All right. It's got to be in here. Add hook in the function list. Hooks colon. That's really weird. Okay, there's a disable hook. Where's add hook? Hmm. What other describe commands do we have? Describe a uh, slot. Oh, is there a method? No. Hmm. Ismail says, you're one hour behind me. Where are you? I'm in Athens, Greece. Fade says, I suspect that if the Nix process raises an exception, it's blocking at the debugger. Oh, that's fun. So it's interesting that I can't get the documentation for hooks. Um, how about this? Describe any hook. Add hook. Hooks. It's telling me a lot of things about variables, but it's not telling me anything about hooks. Describe dash slot hook. Okay, so enable hook, that's interesting. I guess it's for uh, for modes, right? Geo says, also talk to uh, the Knicks founder, John Mercuris. Mercuris, Mercuris, sorry. Yes. Uh, all right, so anyway, I wonder, I mean, this must just be a function. So slot default, I'm guessing it's the slot default for um, web buffer for the request resource hook. So I should just be able to copy and paste that. Thing I don't know though, is what make handler resource is. So can I find that information? Make handler resource, great. At least we have that, which is completely useless. Um, hooks function. Interesting. What about ad hook? Uh, is there, okay, they're, they're calling Matt make handler resource. All right. Meta dot in the source. Cool. Let's, uh, let's just try it then. Maybe somewhere in the main part here. Hooks colon, um, ad hook. So how we got here is that I want to use, whoops, wrong one. Uh, help after hook. Help after hook. And then make handler resource. That's a function, right? Make handler resource. I feel like I shouldn't have to do that. Then old Reddit handlers is a plain old defund. So uh, defund, well, can I just give it the darken? function. That would be nice if I could. It wouldn't be very emaxy emaxy if I couldn't. Make hook. Hmm. All right, so I can reload the configuration. Uh, load init file is the function for that. Oh, here we go. Error. Next user darken is undefined. Cool. 
Can you get me out of here then? I don't even see the stack trace. Oh boy. Did I really break every... Let's try this. Uh, load a knit file. Okay. I think I had broken everything for a second there. So, uh, darken. Okay, nix slash web mode colon darken. Let's try that. I have to use the right namespace for the function. Now I can uh, load init file again. I uh, didn't like that. Cannot load the init file because of type error. It's not a type or function symbol. Well, it's a symbol, isn't it? Yeah, these these uh, stack traces are mm, not so nice. But I mean, this is kind of a complicated thing going on here, so it's a little bit diff difficult. Perhaps ha perhaps wrap it in a lambda. Yeah, does lambda have the same syntax? I'm guessing it needs no parameters, doesn't it? What does make? Uh, let's see. Request data. Oh, for the resource. I see. That's not, that's probably not what I want. What if I go back to look at the documentation of uh, help after hook? Does it tell me what it wants? G standard generic function, default combine hook. Hmm. Where is this? What is this Serapium? It must be a library. Okay. And there's like a hooks library. Whoa, what did I just do? It went way too far back. I don't know why it didn't store the history correctly. So, um, books. I know it's here. I just saw it. And then uh, meta G, meta G, I think is for following. So we want to go to FK. Yeah. I don't really need to look at this, but I'm just curious. Look function. So if I just give it a plain old Lambda, will it be happy? Come on now. What is Lispy doing? Somehow I got an unbalanced parentheses going on here. Ah, Lispy mode. What's going on? There we go. All right. So I don't know if that's going to work, but let's find out. Um, load a knit file. Didn't like that either. Hook void. Not of type list when binding list. This is really not helpful. Hey, Benoit. Okay. Quote, next help after hooked. I don't think that's what I had in, oh, yeah, it is, okay. Okay. Fine. Um, so maybe we do need one of those wrapper functions. Let me see what else we have. So make handler. So if I look for a control HF, make dash handler. Hacker. Can't type. Handler. Okay, so make handler resource. Make handler key mass, key mass buffer. Make hook. Make a hook and return it. That might create a hook though. The hook function needs to be registered before it can be called by the generic function. It shouldn't be getting called though, should it? Do I just need to define the function somewhere? And why do I have so many windows open? Uh, is it kill? Delete window? Yeah. Why are these all open? All right. Well, let's try this. 
Looks terrible. Let's do it this way. Okay. All right. Um, load a net file. Still doesn't like it. Can't make a handler without without a name. Okay, so maybe it does want an actual symbol, right? Let's just go to that then. Uh, defun. Uh, darken help mode. And I'll just call this function inside of that. Drop that right there. Take this out. And then DW darken help mode. Okay, let's give that a shot. Hmm. Handler resources not of type or function symbol. So I wonder if it's because of the missing a parameter. Maybe what's happening is that hooks add hook is a generic function and it's being applied to this help after hook and we're using the wrong type. So does dark mode work though? I could try that. Let's go to that uh, auto config lisp file. I can just grab that and drop it right here. Put the action in the argument position. What? I don't think I did, did I? Anyway. Down case region, okay. That's okay, no worries. So default modes. All right, so we got Emacs mode and I also wanna put in, uh, let's see, Jeff says, don't worry, fade, it's all good. Uh, next slash uh, style dash mode, colon, colon, or was it just one colon? Or is it two colons? Dark dash mode. Why does it have two colons here? Let's just comment that out and then uh, load a net file. Okay, it didn't complain. Hmm, maybe it did work actually. Uh, let's go to, come on now, uh, github .github, github.com. Ah, interesting. Is it actually just respecting it though, I wonder? Let me check um, uh, github.com slash davidwill slash dot files. How about that? Dark is listed in the mode line. It, it's not doing the right thing though. It's like doing some hacky dark mode, which is fine for some websites, but I think it's, you know, it's not setting the browser to dark mode, I think. But it's not terrible. So I'll just take that out for now. If I use control R to reload, then, well, no. Hmm. Maybe I need to, oh, no, I should have done it, right? Load a net file. Let's do it again. This is a WebKit GTK. So let's do it one more time. Control L, github.com. Oh, come on. Dot files. Hey, I don't want search results. I want you to give me the thing I typed previously. This one, right there. Okay, good, it's fixed. It seems like the CSS for this mode isn't right. Yeah, definitely seems like this, not right. Anyway, uh, let's go back to the manual. Some hooks like the above expect a return value, so it's important to make sure we return request data here. See the documentation of the respective hooks for more details. Well, I would like to know why, uh, like help after hook doesn't give me any further information. Let's try scribe function uh, help after, nope, help after hook. Describe class, help mode. Yep, there we are, help mode. OK. 
Okay. Constructor, disruptor. Okay, so enable hook. Default value next make hook mode. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess. Run when enabling the mode, takes the mode as the argument. It is run before the destructor. Destructor? I think that's wrong, that should be constructor. So maybe, uh, that variable that I was looking at is probably the wrong place to put this. So make hook mode. What if I look at that then? Uh, make hook mode. Hmm, okay. What is it doing? Okay, this thing gets into a weird state where you, you try to kill a buffer and it does the wrong thing. So um, I'm looking for documentation on this make hook mode. So what if I describe class next? Buffer make hook. What about um, help make hook? No. Buffer make hook. For browser and for user browser. Yeah, we're lacking some documentation here, I think. You gotta kill the buffer twice and then keep killing things because, wow, dude, seriously. What is happening? Zane says, I've experienced my fair share of bugs too. One version, it had so many Nix crashes on every right click. Great. Make hook resources for something else. Uh, I'm, I, I'm starting to get the impression that there are specific hook creation functions for specific types. So if we go back here to the manual, we can see that that uh, make, uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? Resource hook? Resource? Make hook resource? Oh, come on. Resource. I'm in the manual. Make handler resource. Okay. So make handler resource is expecting a resource. This request resource hook, I think it receives a resource as the parameter, this request data. So I think there must be a specific uh, type that it wants. Control HF, uh, make handler resource. Argument list, hooks function, key, hooks name, hooks place, hooks value. So it wants a hook function. And the type here says that the function that it takes, I'm guessing this is what it means, is it takes a request data. But we get no other information about what other functions like that are available. If I use control H F make dash handler, gives me a handler for key maps buffer. Doesn't give me for anything else. But it says make hook resource, make a hook and return it. I get a JavaScript error. Who knows why? I can't even kill the buffer. Make hook resource. Yeah, same thing. Automatic redirect? No, no. We're trying to just like make help buffers um, have a dark theme by default by setting a hook. And it's not clear so far how I'm supposed to do that. Okay, um, let's take a pause on that for a moment. Uh, one thing we could try to do is set up a REPL into Nixt so that we could experiment with these things a little bit more comfortably. Uh, let's see if I can get rid of that. Come on, I can't even do key bindings here, so this buffer is totally broken. All right. Okay, I can't do it here either. Alt, oh, I'm pressing the wrong key binding, so that's my fault. Next, uh, slink, 
REPL. Okay, so apparently you can run start swank. Wait, hold on. Okay, there's Nix 3 pre-release 1. Maybe this is why I'm having trouble because there's like a newer version. That was uh, July of last year. If I download this, what's going to happen? It won't run. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to put on uh, Vim mode or VI mode. Emacs mode. Turn that off. Okay. We'll see if this actually does anything. <laughs> okay. I just made my problem worse. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to kill this instance of Nyx. We're going to run it again. Okay. Loading history of 21 URLs. Fine. So what I was doing uh, was looking for the, well, let's, first of all, let's go to the next, um, the next GitHub. I kind of want to see, I'm pressing enter. And here we go with the locking up of next. This has happened to me a couple times before. I have no idea why. And it doesn't even respond to uh, quit. Messages. All right, so uh, proced next. It's right there under my cursor, right? Okay, X kill. Bye bye. All right, so we're back here again. Um, okay, at least it worked that time. Releases, let's take a look. Okay, so they have a pre-release two. Is there another package for Nixt? Or is that, was that the only one? Yeah, I searched for Nixt and we only saw the 224. Uh, what was before release one? Okay, I see. So that was from literally a year ago. So maybe a lot of things have changed since then. Kind of sucks if we can't try this out. There's a Geeks recipe. Uh, okay. So we just downloaded that file into what the downloads folder. Cool. Fine. Let's take a look at that. If we do this. Um, hmm. Interesting. So did it actually make... Okay, maybe there's a pack that we can download here. So the tarball could be a uh, pack version from Geeks using Geeks pack. So let's give that a shot and see maybe if we can run that. That'd be interesting if we could, because it might be a lot different. There needs to be a uh, next next package in Geeks to package this up. Probably don't need to download anything. Just need to run swank command in next. Yeah, I, I could probably just run swank, but let's let's give this a shot really quick because I'm curious in case they've fixed a lot of stuff here. While we're waiting on that, if we go back here. Uh, there's release notes. Ah, uh, screenshots. The UI seems to have changed slightly. Is this on the blog? Articles. GambitConf. Cool. Apparently there's a talk about uh, Nixed by uh, Pierre Ambervar. Whoa. I'm trying to go back. 
back. History backwards, control B. Okay, apparently I was doing that wrong the whole time. Theming the next three approach. Pre-release one. Okay, so they have changed quite a lot, it seems. Good to give this a shot. Downloads. Okay, finish downloading. See you again. Okay. That was XZ. Um, will, it, will it work? I don't think so. I have to uh, see XZ. I don't remember the commands for that. Uh, D. X, Z, dash, D, next. That's taking a while. Let's check proc ad. Certainly chewing up the processor there. And uh, Nixt isn't helping. All right, let's close that window. Hey, Anders. Not yet, not yet. Got about uh, 30 minutes, I think. Why is it taking so long? I should have used like a verbose flag. Okay. So uh, what is the, let's see, tar uh, XVF, next, here we go. Oh, all right. So yes, this is a, this is a, uh, a Geeks Pack output, which means it will run. But look at all this stuff it has. Let's not do this in eShell, huh? Let's get rid of that. And uh, let's run in VTerm for this. So uh, tar, wait. CD downloads. Come on. Am I there? Great. Tar XVF next. Because it's taking way too long for um, E shell to catch up with the output. Yes, definitely talking about next. I mean, I'm I'm curious to see how things have progressed. There we go. Great. So uh, user local bin next. There we are. Faster without V, you're right. See you, Minas Mazar. Uh, let's see, the address trying to visit has an invalid certificate. Really? Interesting, okay. What about uh, Alt-L? All right, so we, at least we can go places. Articles, page cannot be loaded. Try again in the moment. Huh. So how about uh, github.com davidwill.files? I see. Probably it needs... Yeah, the, the bundled thing that it has doesn't have access to the certificates. Uh, add... Oh, come on. Control space. Yeah. Add domain to certificate exceptions. Github.com. Whatever. All right, so how about uh, let's reload this page then. Uh-huh. I'll bet that um, all the styles are coming from another subdomain or something, and it's uh, not actually working. Creeper says, have you tried EAF browser? I have not. Yeah, CDN for sure. Uh, I haven't tried it, but uh, now I'm kind of tempted to, to be honest. Hey, Alex. Because uh, this is not working so well. And if I could have a, a built-in browser in an Emacs, it'd be nice. Though I don't know what's going to happen with Wayland. Uh, let's go over to Firefox for a second. So Emacs application framework Wayland. Does it actually work in Wayland? Ah, okay. It says it supports Wayland. If it does, we might have a future there. And what about Geeks? Does it have it? Uh, Geeks search EAF. 
Uh, Emacs EAF. No. No. Application framework. Yes, I'm on Wayland. I'm using Sway. Oh, it's under X Wayland. JSON needs to be installed. Why? Okay, whatever. That's for another day, for sure. In Geeks EF browser could be a trouble. There's no support so far for Geeks. Okay, good to know. All right, so let's just back out of that for now. We know that uh, Nixt 2 works. So what we'll do... Hey, Gavin, nice to see you. Um, we can run... Was it Slime? Uh, run Swank? Start Swank. Okay, Swank star, server started at port 4006. And what did Jeff say? Jeff said, I need to run uh, Slime Connect Schoon. All right, Slink. The Sly work? Uh, Sly Connect? Localhost, 4000 and what did it tell me? Six. Valid protocol message. Um, okay, fine. Sure. So, yes, I need to have a slime package installed, which I don't have at the moment. Um, uh, I don't have that. Ha, the rare common lisp appearance, yes. Normally, I would not be talking about common lisp. Uh, let's see. Slime. Yeah, okay. So, we don't have... Slime set up here. Straight use package. Let's just pull in Slime. Just a temporary little package install. All right, cool. Now, Slime connect. Localhost 4006. Um, yes. All right, so we're in next user, that's cool. So if I go to my config file, init.lisp, how do I connect to slime here? So if I were to say slime eval region, boom, okay. That seems to work. Can I do uh, this? Let's see, slime eval, can, I, can it prompt me? No, let's try this, uh, well, this, let's do this. Eval region, darken. Hey, it worked. And if I do it again, uh, it, it's not toggleable apparently. So we can actually use a REPL to connect. Uh, so all we really had to do to do that was to run start swank inside of uh, Nixt, which only works apparently in Nixt 2. In Nixt 3, they use uh, slink instead, which is a different protocol, I think. Okay, control C, control C in the dot list file should compile it in the next process. Well, let's see. Invalid protocol message. I think Slink has taken over. Uh, Slink, can I turn that off somehow? Uh, Sly has taken over the control C, control C binding. Uh, what is it? Slime eval buffer. So if I were to rebind that, uh, local, local set key, right? Huh. Uh, yeah. And uh, key command, that would be keyboard, control C, control C, right? And command would be slime eval buffer. All right, how about that? No, didn't work. Compile rather than eval out of the box. It should be just control C, control C. Yeah, that would work if I hadn't totally screwed it up. Slime mode. Okay, that worked. I just had to turn on slime mode. That makes sense. Cool. What else then do I want to take a look at? 
So we were trying to do the hook thing before. Um, hooks add hook. Does that give me anything? Variable add hook is unbound. However, it does seem to know the namespace. I don't know which uh, option I should use there. Let's see. What do I use? Let's see, slime help, ripple shortcut help, uh, describe, describe function. Hooks, add hook. Hey, here we go, we have information. And we have the methods list. So interesting, we now actually get information about the methods for add hook. Hook resource, hook download, uh, hook mode, handler mode, okay. Add handler to hook, return hook. Hook must be of type hook mode. Handler must be of type handler mode. So is there a make handler mode function? Can I get some completions here? No. Completions? No, no, okay. Uh, hooks make handler any. Huh. Apropos hook. Ah, that's, that's nice. <clears throat> this is much better than trying to uh, mess around inside of Nick's own help stuff. All right, so help before help, hook, help after hook, not documented, hooks, hook void. I think that's the one, well, is it? Is it the one that I busted? Hmm. Okay. I don't know if that's just a uh, a fake hook that just sort of accepts a call and doesn't do anything. Make buffer after hook, okay. What is a hook void? So uh, slime describe hook. Uh, undefined function, thank you. No value, fine. All right, so hooks. Uh, is there a make, make hook any, make hook void? Key handlers. Handlers can also call named functions. Hey, Eric. Weird that, uh, okay, this is getting way too complicated. Like, why isn't there just a, you know, a simple explanation of what I'm supposed to be doing for uh, non-resource hooks? Okay, fine. I'm trying to think of what else I could look for. I had seen something a second ago. Can't remember what it was though. Uh, let's look at help after hook again. 
Uh, that's a variable. Describe variable help. No, 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 no. What happened there? Yeah. Whoops. No. Describe variable. Uh, no. Slime. Describe symbol. Uh, that's not what I wanted. How about right here? Capital K. Okay. A special variable. Um, we also have, what was it, hooks? No, no. Next slash uh, help mode. Never mind. Help mode, colon, help mode. Uh, type, mode for displaying documentation. A lot of CLO, CLOS information here. Uh, after hook. Hmm, okay. Yeah, it, it seems like it should be simpler than this, to be honest. Let's check the actual website, maybe. There's a manual here. Maybe it's the same as the one that we've seen before. Yep. So hook, uh, let's see, hooks. Same hook example. What if I go look at the uh, GitHub, next, GitHub. Maybe they have a new uh, documentation file here somewhere, manual. Let's see what their manual says here. Do they have any new information here? No. Ah. Oops. Where is the manual? <laughs> Excuse me. Jesus. Yes, the entire Hooks project, but I don't know if it's going to answer my question, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Org files. I'm trying to figure out how to set up a hook for the help mode, which is turning out to be harder than I thought. So it has a hook for when the mode uh, gets turned on. If you look at, uh, what is it? Describe class help mode. There's an enable hook. But there's also some kind of, uh, in the presence of CLOS, I don't really understand what hooks win the architecture. Well, I guess hooks are something that are, it's supposed to be easier for an Emacs user to understand because I'm guessing the primary audience of Nixt is Emacs users. But in this case, um, it doesn't follow the typical patterns you expect to see for Emacs. So I don't think it's really accomplishing the goal. That's just because I don't know what I'm doing. So I could be wrong about that. What if I what if I click configure here? What does it do? Input slot value. That doesn't help me. Except I would have to type code there. I think right. Hooks in documentation. Yes, it yeah, it's in the documentation and it's not telling me exactly what to do uh, for something that's not that specific example. That specific example works, I think, but there's other kinds of hooks that don't follow the same pattern. All right, make hook mode, right? I think that's what I need to look for again. So uh, describe symbol, what was it, nix colon colon? Hook mode, that's it, okay. So this makes the hook, I believe, make a hook and return it. 
Handlers can also contain named functions. Uh, those will automatically be encapsulated with make handler mode. So there's a function called make handler mode. Is that what I'm missing? Mm. Unknown symbol, make handler mode. Uh, I'm guessing it's in the next namespace. Uh, let's see, next colon colon make handler mode. No, there isn't one. Huh, it does work. Okay, well, let's try that again, because I'm extremely confused. Because it doesn't show up in the function list, but apparently it exists. So help after hook, uh, make handler mode. This would make a lot of sense then. So then uh, if I were to eval this, eval region, right? Okay, so that function now exists. And if I were to eval this, eval region, uh, make handler, oh wait, I screwed that up. Go, what, number five? Okay, so this needs to be nixed colon colon. Hey, stop that, all right. Um, it's not a type or function symbol, handler mode. So maybe I'm just doing something completely wrong here. Or function symbol. Stop. Is this just supposed to be like this? Hooks void is not a type list. I don't get it. So uh, help after hook, if I were to describe that symbol, it contains hooks hook void. Does that mean it doesn't accept hooks? I'm really confused. Maybe I need to be using this other thing here. Uh, enable hook. So if I were to use instead, how do they do that in the example? Um, it was here in the manual. Make handler resource. Okay, so add hook. That's for web buffer. Okay, so how about this then? Nope. Help mode. Does that do anything? And uh, enable hook. I think what we're seeing here is request resource hook. So how about enable hook? And uh, slot default. That's wrong. We need this in there. Slot default. And then make handler resource. Well, we were using uh, make handler hook and passing the name or the symbol for the function, I suppose. That's the function. Let's see, does it work? No, no, no. Control C, Control R, I think, right? Help mode is not a known class. Um, Slime describe, okay, that doesn't have class, but if I go into next, help mode, next help mode colon help mode. All right. Nope, that's wrong, right there. Man, this is way more complicated than it should be. Okay, that seems to have done something. If I reload the page, doesn't do anything. Control H R. Okay, that might have worked. Let me kill that buffer. 
Uh, function next user make handler hook is undefined. Wow. Okay. Uh, what do I want to do for that? Is next colon colon, right? Make handler hook. All right. So I eval it again. Kill the buffer. Kill the buffer. Control HR. Next you. No, no. I fixed that. I thought it worked. I don't know if it works. Hmm. Style warning. Okay. I don't care about style warnings. Let's close. Oh, I never. Re no, I don't need to do that because I already have the thing open and I have a REPL connected. So I don't need to uh, reload the, uh, the init. I might just have too many buffers open. List buffers. So I want to get, I want to kill all help buffers. Yeah, bye. Whatever. Control H R. So I wonder if the hooks are compile the form instead of evaling it. Can I just do I do Control C Control C here or slime compile region? Okay. Still doesn't like it. Let's just kill it. Mm, next, make handler hook is undefined. I swear we just saw that, didn't we? That's really weird. All right, so let's do slime again. Slime. Start swank. Fine. 4006. Um, okay, so I need to reconnect. Slime reconnect. There's no way to reconnect. Connect. Okay, there we go. Slash namespace. I think you're looking for it in the wrong uh, package. Okay, let's try it again. Maybe I'm wrong. Scribe symbol, uh, it's not there. Make handler hook. I swear though, I saw one. I have no idea where that was. If I look for um, make handler resource, Oh, next colon. This is really starting to annoy me because sometimes you you need colon colon. Sometimes you only need colon. I don't get it. Uh, let me let me try put my cursor here. Hmm. Unknown symbol. I still don't get it. Control C, Control K should compile and load the whole buffer. Um, read error, make handler hook not found in a Nix package. Then why am I? Apropos, make handler hook. Oh, private symbols. Cool. Thanks. This has been really successful. It must be another package and I don't know, I, I keep losing how I found this to begin with. So apropos, uh, make hook mode, right? Describe function. Yeah, this is even less helpful. Uh, describe class, help mode, nix colon colon hook mode, make hook mode. 
try to get completion working. I don't know what I should do to get completion working because it doesn't seem to be... And I don't know why my editor is not... Uh, my colon does what it does. Let's go back into the REPL. The weird thing is that I get completions for things inside of like uh, describe symbol. Like if I do next tab, help dash mode. There's a help mode after hook. but it's a void hook. I think that's BS. Alt tab does nothing. No, not, no tab, no control M I or control meta I. Very, very confusing. Okay, I think I've run out of time. I'm gonna have to consult an expert in Nixt to figure out what's going on here. So I might actually have to end up talking to uh, someone from the Nixt team. Uh, and that might, might be an interesting stream to get some actual help figuring out how to configure Nix correctly. I think it could be pretty useful if I understood how to configure it. Um, because it has a lot of the power that you would want in a program like Emacs when applied to the browser. But uh, yeah, if it's not so easy to figure out how to configure it, then there's kind of a problem. Maybe there's some good blog posts around. So what if I were to quickly look up uh, how to configure Nixt. Maybe there's just a lack of good documentation, but there's like other stuff around. Common settings. Okay. Fine, that didn't really help too much. How to make a custom web browser with Nixt. That's pretty recent. Oh, come on. Don't track me. Yeah, that doesn't tell me anything either. Gavin says, having a broken REPL setup makes working with Nix feel like walking to a minefield blindfolded, for sure. And now we're getting other things that don't, uh, oh, hold on a second. This is from 2021. All right. Anyway. Something for another time. Let's just see if this says anything about hooks. No, this is very high level. Anyway, so hopefully um, this was somewhat informative. I don't exactly know what information you might have obtained from this, other than the fact that Nix is supposed to be sort of like Emacs, it's just a little bit harder to configure. But um, it does have a lot of potential, I think, as a browser, so long as you can get past uh, any was that a any bugginess that you run into with it. Um, I'm guessing that Nix 3 would be a lot better. I would have to build it myself just to see how well it works because I think the, um, the package that I downloaded was not really optimized for running on someone else's system with certificates and whatnot. So I believe, um, Probably the best bet is using the pre-release version. I don't know when they're planning to actually release the full version three, but uh, hopefully it's relatively soon. Einder says, probably easy to use when you know how to use it. Yeah, probably so. Benoit says, uh, maybe that should be the next stream set up Emacs to be ready to hack on Nixt. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, I, I don't do much common list packing, so I don't really know like the best way to set everything up. And if they're changing to to uh, Slink and Sly in the version three, I don't really know how much it makes sense to focus on uh, using Slime for that. But anyway, um, 
I'll just say once again, uh, this weekend is FOSDEM 2023. I have a talk on Sunday called uh, An Introduction to Geeks Home. So if you're interested in uh, Geeks Home or you just want to check out the talks at FOSDEM, uh, there's a lot of talks that are going on virtually. I think, I don't know if they're live streaming the talks that are happening in person, but they're definitely live streaming the virtual talks like mine, which are like pre recorded videos. So if you go to the FOSM 2023 site, uh, you should find the links to those there. Um, I've got the link to my talk in the show notes, which I will commit as soon as I turn off stream. And um, yeah, hopefully you like that. And keep an eye out for an actual video on the channel about Geeks Home soon. I keep saying soon. I don't know, there's a lot of things going on right now, so it's a little bit difficult to get time for video making, but I do want to do it because I think it's time to start uh, making videos about Geeks Home because it's the thing I'm most interested in at the moment. All right, folks, thank you so much for being here. I hope you all have a great weekend. Until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.